Some time ago, we discussed seven pieces of video game music that blew our minds so thoroughly, we think there are still a few pieces left behind the sofa. But turns out that video barely even skimmed the surface of the deep ocean that is mind-blowing game music. And the Outside Extra and Outside Xbox teams had much more to say when it comes to individual gaming tunes that rocked our worlds. Grab your headphones then, because these are the pieces of video game music that blew our minds. Volume 2. The difficult second album. For those of you who regularly watch the channel, you'll know that there, there is a composer known to many as Grant Kirkhope, who I'm a particular fan of, uh, mainly thanks to his amazing work on a very underappreciated and uh, needs to be much loved more uh, RPG, Kingdoms of Amala, to which he did the soundtrack. And I love it a lot, uh, as shown by this clip. <laughs> Hello everyone. I wish you could see Ellen's face right now. This isn't going to be a Kingdom of Amalur thing, is it, Ellen? N no, no. Uh, I was. It was very, very close, though. It's very close. But Should I pull the plug on the camera, Luke. No. <laughs> no. Let's see where she's going with this. All right. Uh, Grant Kirkhope is a bit of a, a staple in uh, video game music, thanks to his work at Rare, which involved a lot of the tunes. In fact, all of the tunes from Banjo Kazooie. There's a lot of amazing, amazing tunes in there. Uh, Spiral Mountain is ridiculously cool and catchy. Woo! Uh, the main theme is great with all the banjo stuff. <laughs> but my favorite is Treasure Trove Cove, which is just great. <laughs> Now what I like most about this is the steel drums, also known as steel pans, which are just totally tropical, make me feel like I'm drinking lilt in the summer holidays. It, it's funny because this isn't really like a nostalgic piece for me because I played this game a lot later than everyone else. I didn't have an N64 or anything like that. I jumped into the world of Treasure Trove Cove and I was like, what is this? This is great. <laughs> That bit. It's the da -da 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 -da. and that's the stuff that I absolutely love in Grant's music, especially in the like Banjo Kazooie series, and also his more recent work in ukulele. It's those little pieces of da -da 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 -da. it's like from very kind of very British, like da -da 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 -da. like and those little kind of like little tunes that you've had stuck in your head for ages because they popped up in other little things. But he like incorporates them and makes them his own thing as you're wandering around a little beach with crabs and stuff. <laughs> and the thing is with this piece of music is that it loops seamlessly, because it has to, because you're running around this island collecting boundless <laughs> things, uh, such as lovely music notes and jiggies and all that sort of stuff. It breaks down into lots of different sections, so it doesn't feel like you're just hearing the same thing over and over and over again. And that's why it's in your head forever, and it's the greatest thing just, just ever. <laughs> I just have such a soft spot for it because of the steel drums. I'm such a sucker for like steel drum, steel pan music. There's a really nice like tone to it. Really nice, I'm not sure what the word is, like ombre. <laughs> um, Tambra. It's just, it's very pleasing and it, it's very, a very, very, very bouncy piece. <laughs> but this is a twofer, okay? Because not only do I love the original, but I absolutely adore the remix for the Super Smash Brothers uh, Spiral Mountain map. It's so good and Yoko Shimomura has remixed it and it is epic. So it all seems normal. Wait, piano, da -na -na -na. like it's those those little things, da -da 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 -da. all that sort of stuff that like gets in your head. Da -da 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 -da. It's very Grant Kirkhope, 
style and then hearing that in Smash Brothers is really, really, really cool. And it's just like they had to make it a little bit faster paced because you're, you're punching each other, punching the lights out of each other as Nintendo and other characters. It is mayhem and it fits perfectly with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. There's some like amazing breakdowns in there as well. Like there's a bit where it just goes really, really, really calm and then brings the beat back in. It's just one of those tracks that like I got completely lost in playing and hearing the original in Banjo-Kazooie and then playing it in Super Smash Brothers, it was like, oh, this is so good, I'm gonna punch the lights at you, Luke, sorry. <laughs> Take <Bye>. this, Peach. <laughs> Zelda. Oh, yeah, you're Zelda, aren't you? But you should do Peach, you'd be good as Zelda Peach. Zelda for life. <laughs> but yeah, I really love it. It's totally tropical, makes you wanna boogie, and then like, like the first one is like very like, yeah, yeah, and then the remix, you're like, yes, I'm just dance this and it's for some reason I just love it. <laughs> In the comments of the last one of these we did, everyone was very surprised I didn't pick any music from Monkey Island. Um, so I've picked some music from Monkey Island. <laughs> <laughs> but Monkey Island is such a it's a series of such great music and Overall, I think I probably prefer the music from The Curse of Monkey Island, the third one out of all the entire series, but there's a particular piece of music that I want to talk about because when you're talking about bits of music that blew your mind, I think uh, the music from Monkey Island 2, uh, from Woodtick, the first sort of town that you come to in the game. I mean, it, it, blew, it blew my mind, but it also kind of changed the way that music worked in, in games as well, forever. Uh, it's a really significant piece of programming by the guys at LucasArts called iMuse. Which uh, is short for Interactive Music Streaming Engine, something like that. And basically what it, it does is it changes the music in the game based on what you're doing in the game. You're walking around this town which is based around a load of sort of wrecked ships that are all linked by um, wooden walkways. It's very atmospheric, very cool town. And as you walk around the town, uh, the music that's playing is this sort of, it's, it's like a laid back, laconic, kind of slightly reggae-ish uh, bit of music. So as you walk around the general town, you've got this bit of background music, which is kind of like a holding pattern, a basic bit of music loop as you, as you go around. But then when you enter different buildings in Woodtick, the music will transition and change into a specific kind of music for that location. using different instruments, different percussion. So for example, you go to the carpenters building and there'll start to be a beat that inv involves like hammers and saws and it'll be like being played on an oboe. Then you go into the cartographer's um, house and he's uh, a bit more of a refined fellow. So the, the melody, it's a different melody and it's taken up on the harpsichord. Hello. Then you go into the bar and you get a kind of very sort of brassy, like stab, reggae stab heavy kind of, uh, kind of rhythm. The cleverest thing about this system was the way that it would seamlessly roll into these new melodies so that when you went in, it didn't have to like finish the piece of music it was on before and then start a new piece of music. It would dynamically transition into the new piece regardless of where it was. It was like there were multiple exit points from the melody beforehand where it could transition outwards. And it would like roll in from a different point from depending on when you left the area you were in before. It was very clever and I think it probably took me a while to notice what it was doing because it was so seamless. And it 
just made sense to my brain. But for someone to have to have thought of that in the first place and then made that system, and now that's what pretty much all video games do as you go around. The music will change depending on what's happening in the game. But that was the first time it had ever been done in a video game. And it, uh, it blew my mind the way they were adding music, subtracting instruments, and uh, just transitioning at different points. Yeah, they, they invented this system. It got used again in TIE Fighter um, in a second release of TIE Fighter, so the first one just had the same music throughout, but then in the updated version they used iMuse, so when you were flying around in space with no enemies around, it'd be very calm, but then when enemy ships would arrive, then, you know, the music would start to pick up and get a bit more exciting to soundtrack your dogfights. It's such a basic concept, you're like, well, surely all video games always did that, but they didn't, and they didn't, the only time they started doing it was after Monkey Island 2 and after Wood Ticks music. Monkey Island 2. Here's to Monkey Island 2. Hooray! Hooray! Brace yourselves, strap in, because it's the Corneria theme from Star Fox. This is the uh, first proper bit of music you hear in the game. It's the tune to the first level, which is Corneria. It's a nice planet that aliens have invaded. So it's up to you. Fox and your mates to shoot them until they're dead. I think I think it was the first time I ever really noticed the music in a video game. It was always just like a sort of ambient thing that was happening, but this was the first time that it really stuck with me and I would be humming it and singing it when I wasn't playing the game. It couldn't be more perfectly suited to the moment that you first hear it. You're sort of dispatched, you and your team, and you sort of fly out of these headquarters and, and like, and, you know, you're sort of strapped in, you're like, drrr, 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 and you fly down this big corridor and out straight into a dogfight and the music kicks in and it's absolutely amazing. This bit. This is an absolute validation that all you need is big orchestral stabs to make a song. I know Andy is a fan. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. Part two. Here we go. This is the emotional core of the song. <laughs> this is where the keyboard's going heavy on the sun. And, and in the left hand, we've got this is something a little special is happening there. And then this climb. Like an R wing. Like an it's a barrel roll in musical form. And th that's more or less it. Can I show some appreciation for that, that drum fill just before it kicks in? Yeah, let's hear that drum fill again. Yeah, that's, that's nice, that's nice. It's a bit fancy, but it's good. And the thing that I love about this song is that it's not fancy, it's so stripped back. I will turn that down a little bit. No. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so spare, uh, but so driving, like it never lets up. Like the tempo is just absolutely relentless. There was actually a really interesting version in Starlink Battle for Atlas, which was that sort of plastic toys make a spaceship game, but on the Switch it had a fox in it. And yeah, and that version was 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 really quite cool. It was it was just a sort of update that was very, very spacey as well. I had a lot of time for that, but nothing beats the original because it has so few instruments and it just is absolutely bloody relentless and it perfectly, perfectly captures the feeling of having an exciting space fight but also you're a fox and your friends are a bird and a frog. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the other one? Oh, a hare. They all annoy me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear this music without hearing their like little voices as they appear in, in the game. <laughs> but this was before you could get like a voice into a game, so it's all like... <laughs> Oh my god! What what, well, I wasn't going to go into it, but since you since you asked, so good. Here it is. I know what you mean though, like the original is slightly better because it's so just like clean and Yeah, sparse. it's just clean and spare and you can appreciate the remixes and the different versions but the original is... 
un unbested. When Luke approached me and asked I come back to talk about more game music that blew my mind, I thought, how can I possibly follow up on the Halo 2 track um, that is my absolute fave and blew my mind the hardest? But then I thought about Doom. And specifically, specifically, I, I wanted to talk about one very like authored, very choreographed moment, a very specific intention, a very specific bit of mood setting and scene setting. So it's the first 10 minutes of the game. You wake up naked on a sarcophagus. We've all been okay. there. <laughs> and you're completely nude until you get your uh, doom guy armor on. And then the game's like, here's a gun, here's a pistol, here's how you do glory kills. Here's a gore nest, you know, your basics, your tutorials, and then you wrench a shotgun out of the hands of some poor sucker who's already been got by demons. And then you step into the elevator and um, there's, uh, what's his name, Samuel Hayden is on the, 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 the intercom. Like He's talking to you, but he sounds you like... <laughs> he sounds like um, like Beelzebub, like he speaks with the voice of a thousand flies, and he's like... Our interest in their world was purely for the betterment of mankind. Everything has clearly gotten out of hand now, yes. But it was worth the risk. Up to this point, it's been kind of seeding the theme, what I think of as the kind of doom theme, like at a very kind of modest low level at first, and then it kind of climbs a bit for the, the gore nest stuff. And then there's just this lovely moment where Hayden's like, it was worth the risk. And then Doom Guy's like, I don't think so, but silent because he doesn't talk. <laughs> and then he smashes the intercom. And then boom, it says Doom and the, the theme comes in like full blown and it's like dun 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 and it's so metal but the really genius, the really genius kind of implementation is when you're literally looking out over a Mars hellscape and the doors open and it goes <laughs> as you like rack your shotgun and it is just a sublime statement of intent from Doom as to the next several hours. And it is just so confident. The confidence and the, the just supremely well judged use of a very, very cool theme in the perfect, the perfect introduction to that game. So yeah, good job, Id. Good job, Mick Gordon, the composer. Bloody well done. And uh, good job, Doom. That was fantastic. Behind. Yeah. Have that confidence. Yes! Yes, James. Doom Guy does the best hand acting. Those are the hands that are gonna rip and tear, and everything is, yeah, confident and chuk chuk. Those, he doesn't need to talk when his hands are that expressive, when he smashes the intercom and racks the shotgun, and I mean, now we're talking about hands, not music, <laughs> but it's all part of a glorious whole. Yeah, it's, it's a combat shotgun racking used as percussion, which is inspired. I am a huge fan of the Tomb Raider series and uh, when I was a child I spent a lot of time on my PlayStation 1 running around Venice for the 300th time because I just wanted to listen to Tomb Raider 2's Venice Violins. It was very tricky at first for me to think mm, which one track from Tomb Raider do I really like because there's so many. There's the original menu music, and, and in 2 and 3 the menu music is also amazing, and also even in all the reboots, love the music in all of them, and like everything is like, oh, that hit of nostalgia. But Venice Violins was possibly the first piece of video game music that I fully, fully got obsessed with, to the point where if a soldies will remember, uh, you used to be able to take the PlayStation disc and put it in your CD player and just play the music tracks. And I did that and I would put Venice Violins on repeat because it's 
despite being a very classical sounding piece, an absolute banger. And then bring it in. Oh, it's so intense. You're running around Venice. You're trying to find things. Where's the Scion? But there's, a, there's some bad guys with guns. And it's just like classy AF as you're like running around and there's a bit where you're in a boat and like it's just oh amazing. It's even actually used when you're running around Croft Manor as well. So it makes me think of like Lara in her home. And I love that absolute, the layering of like, you've got the strings, but also there's a blooming harpsichord in there, which is so Lara Croft because she's an aristocrat running around trying to find artifacts. And it's just like, da, 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 da. It's so good, so good. It's a piece that is very much a favorite of Tomb Raider fans. I actually went to a concert that, where they played some of the original music from the original games. And basically when Venice Violins was coming on, they were like, here's the one that you're all waiting for. And you could like feel everyone in the audience being like, <laughs> it was gonna happen. And yeah, I, I just know I'm gonna be one of those people that goes if like if I go on holiday to Venice I'm gonna have that on repeat. <laughs> it's like a total tourist noob. <laughs> so. I love how uh, like power like it's very powerful but but also being very constrained, which I think is very Lara because she's an absolute badass, but it's also very refined just like her. Like she's very refined. Um, and yeah, just imagine running around Venice being like pew, 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 with that in the background. It's epic. So good. And it's just got loads of violins and a harpsichord. What more could you want? What do you want from me, people? It's nothing but mindless violence. <laughs> Man, mindless violence. <laughs> Damn, I should have thought that. Well, hello there, friend. I would like to talk to you about the Mass Effect Galaxy Map music. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I love the Galaxy Map music in Mass Effect, partly because it's a cool piece of music. It's a very sci-fi kind of ambient kind of space music essentially and i'm a big fan of space music uh, stuff that makes you feel like you're a tiny speck in an almost infinite void but one of the key reasons i like it is because so much of the game or so much of the connective tissue of the game is is that galaxy map you know one of the things i think that's really difficult with space games is to give you a kind of sense of scale <laughs> and it would be really easy for Mass Effect to just feel like a load of different planets punctuated by loading screens. But the fact that you go to the galaxy map and this thing kind of unfurls and spreads out as a kind of hologram in the middle of the Normandy and you're, you know, it's vastly overpopulated. You will never visit all of the different locations, but they're all there and they've all got cool sci-fi names. I, you know, I just feel like a substantial number of hours in Mass Effect are spent kind of looking at this galaxy map and really understanding that this is, these environments are tiny dots in, a, in an enormous vast thing. And so definitely my love of that music is tied into what it means for the game and how kind of meaningful that is. But I also just love, I think it's, it's the most memorable piece of music in the game. It's very um, appropriate for the theming, that kind of just really gentle, ambient kind of sci-fi soundtrack. It's, it's really, really perfectly, it's, it's sort of note perfect is the wrong way to describe it, but like tone perfect. It's perfect for Mass Effect. Um, one. It. <laughs> it goes. Do it. <laughs> do, 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then it's got the kind of like the 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 sort of synthy like strings in the background. Yeah. You guys are amazing. If you mash all this together, it sounds exactly the same. <laughs> planet that I'm going to fly to with my cool crew of people, probably going to be full of romanceable aliens. A little bit, Cynthia. There you go. Space opera. You guys, it's the best. Mm, good stuff. 
they use it throughout the entire trilogy because once you've dropped an absolute banger like the galaxy map music in the first game you're not going to throw that out with the trash change everything else keep that I don't know if I'd describe it as a banger. it's an absolute stone cold slaps. space banger it know. slaps andy it yeah in space yeah the seas of venus maybe the ocean of mercury perhaps yeah it makes me think of studying an octopus. <laughs> like you've got the you've got it in the lab. Is this one of the romance scenes that I didn't <laughs> uh, unlock? <laughs> I felt like it would be appropriate in this video to give a nod to the greatest fictional recording artist in video game history, KK Slider from the Animal Crossing series. <laughs> Oh, that, that dog who plays guitar in the coffee shop. Andy's funny joke, that dog who plays guitar. <laughs> yeah, yes, I suppose in a way he is just that dog who plays guitar in a coffee shop, but uh, in so many ways he's, he's so much more. The character of K.K. Slider is based on um, a, a great video game composer, Kazumi Tataka, who, who is a composer most famous for sneaking this weird secret tune into most of the games that he works on. The Animal Crossing music is really, really relaxed and really, really chill. And at the center, at the top of the pyramid of Animal Crossing music is K.K. Slider, the series mascot, who every Saturday night in the game, and bear in mind in Animal Crossing, you have to be doing this on actual Saturday night. So cancel your weekend plans. <laughs> what are you doing Saturday night? Going to a pretty cool chill out spot to see K.K. Slider the dog play some of his cool music. <laughs> He plays all sorts of music. He takes influences from all across the world, all genres. What, but what all of his pieces have in common is that they are only a small amount of percussion and a bad MIDI guitar and some like incomprehensible dog noises. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Cafe KK. <laughs> Sounds like a broken modem. Luke, are you alright? <laughs> <laughs> this is lovely. No, listen, listen to listen to that bit. It sounds it makes me think of uh, Ratatouille being in a French cafe. It's like <laughs> Luke.exe has stopped right. <laughs> I genuinely love this. I also quite like KK Cruise in. <laughs> No, the start, that's it. I've listened to so much KK Slider music, I no longer hear how weird and broken modem like his voice is. It just sounds like singing to me. <laughs> but the, my favourite piece is the delightful, delightful KK Samba. Let's hear a little now. The thing that I love about it is that it's just got this. <laughs> James has got his head in his hands. Look, let's, let me explain. No, it's good. I'll tell you why it's good. <laughs> The music of K.K. Slider should be taught in music academies <laughs> because with only incomprehensible dog noises and woofing and whistling and a terrible MIDI guitar, the composers of Animal Crossing have managed to incorporate the diaspora of, <laughs> of all of the music of the world. There's samba, there's, there's jazz, there's even like a dirge. There's, um, there, oh, there's a brilliant uh, like bubblegum pop one. <laughs> I genuinely think it's amazing how they've managed to make the KK Slider songs sound like all these different genres and all of these different styles.
with with only like that terrible like midi guitar and the and the oh my god and and there's even a key change in KK Samba listen to it I love this. The other thing that I really love about it is just the little grunting noises yeah, that exactly. KK Slider gets. Hey! <laughs> 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 I feel like I've lost the room, <laughs> but I know that at, I know that at home you're agreeing with me. I didn't expect to lose the room this hard. <laughs> I thought this would win some hearts and minds. <laughs> I was wrong. Well, everyone, I'm sorry that you had to see that. Uh, I promise that Luke is not going to be talking or singing about KK Slider again anytime soon on the channel. No, no, stop it! Stop this it! Is no! Good. Stop it! Turn it off! Good, thank you. Are there any other tunes uh, <laughs> that you, uh, you were blown away by in uh, video games? You can pop them down in the comments. Which one was your favourite in this list today? Pop that in the comments as well. Uh, in the meantime, here is the last video we made on uh, songs that blew our mind. Uh, and then over on Outside Xbox, are the bosses and different things that made us rage quit over on Outside Xbox. Another us being opinionated about video games and thinking of the good and bad things that we enjoy and dislike about them. But uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Subscribe, bye.